Hi guys, Harry here. Welcome to Scrap Science. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making a, an aluminium melting furnace uh, using this bucket. So I've got a little uh, fowl pot here which uh, we'll use as the uh, hole which we'll be doing the melting in. I've got some high temperature cement which we got from Bunnings and some uh, perlite which will just take up some space inside where we're going to put in the cement. And uh, we've got some parts for a gas torch. I've got uh, actually a few more pieces out here. Uh, they are... They were galvanized pieces, so uh, what we're doing is dissolving the zinc off the, the outside layer and that should be done eventually. Alright, so what we've got in the drill press now, uh, we've got just the, the end nozzle piece which we're going to use to let all of the gas come out and we're going we're gonna to drill a hole in that and then tap the hole so that we can put in one of these uh, welding tips and that will be our gas outlet for the gas nozzle. So we've drilled and tapped uh, the cap, so now we can screw in the little nozzle and that end piece is done. Now getting rid of the zinc for all these parts is uh, taking a fair while, so I might, uh, might leave this overnight just to make sure we got rid of all of the galvanization because uh, we don't want zinc to burn off and have zinc fumes going everywhere when we actually run the furnace. Uh, so what we'll probably do next is just start uh, cementing. So now what we'll do is we'll um, add some of the cement to the bucket. We won't use all of the cement because uh, we'll need some cement left over for the lid. Uh, we'll add the cement and then we will put in, I think it was 1.5 litres of water that we've got to add uh, for the right mixture. So we've got one bag of cement in there and 1.5 litres of water and we're just going to mix that all around. So now that that's a nice consistency, what we're going to do is add another half a bag of uh, the high temperature cement and then hopefully that'll give us enough uh, cement volume in order to actually build the furnace. So we're going to push the bucket in to see how much space it actually takes up. And that's looking pretty good. We'll find something heavy to put in there so that it actually stays in there while it's setting. Uh, all those lumpy bits around the outside, those are the, the perlite that we've just added to take up a little bit more space. But that's looking good, I think. That looks good to me. Uh, what we'll do now is just stick the bucket in, uh, stick some bricks in the bucket, and then we'll let it set. And then uh, hopefully by 48 hours, apparently, we'll be able to pull out that bucket and we'll have a nice hole for the furnace. There we have it. We've got the cement around the outside. We've got the bucket in the middle and we've got the bricks in there to weigh it down. And then hopefully in 48 hours, that will have set. So it's the next day, uh, those pieces are finished de-galvanizing. So this piece will screw on here, and we've got the little nozzle that we made. And so the actual gas part of the torch is done. We've got the valve, gas will come in here, and then it'll exit out that little tube there. The cement of the furnace is also, I mean, feels pretty dry to me, but the, the instructions say to leave it for 48 hours, so we'll probably leave it for another day or two before we actually end up using it. And anyway, we've got to drill a hole to put the actual torch in. So if we just drill some holes in this big piece, I'll show you what that's for later. Now that we've got four holes uh, drilled each 90 degrees round on this piece, uh, what we're going to use is these, these bolts, which are going to be, uh, we'll tap the holes, and then that will hold in the actual gas nozzle, and that'll be our little entry tube to the actual uh, big gas torch tube. If you haven't figured out by now, this is not the right video to watch if you actually want to uh, find out how to make one of these. I'm just kind of not doing a very good job at explaining, but hopefully you get the idea. So I've got the gas nozzle here, and what this is going to do is this is going to be held within there, and so that uh, with these those bolts that go through there, and then being held in there, the gas that's going to come out is going to be mixed with like an, an intake of air as well, so it'll burn nicely. So there, what do you reckon that? You can probably see in the end there, we've got a nice lot of area for the air flow to flow in, and we've got our little tip right at the end. And then what we'll do is we'll connect this hose, and then at the end of that hose, all of the flames will come out nicely. I hope, anyway. All right, I think it's ready. So we've got the regulator, we've got the hose going right up to our torch. Uh, we've got a close, wow, that's a lot of wind. Uh, 
we got it closed to start off with and then uh, we'll, we'll light it and we'll just slowly turn it on and see how well the flames go. So after a lot of testing, uh, we have finally got it to work. Uh, you can't really see the flame coming out the end there, but there is a flame there. Uh, we've got it hooked up to the regulator. We've got a pressure of about, I don't know if you know, uh, what, seven and a half PSI. And it's actually working very nice. We've got this little piece of cardboard here. Uh, that's to control the amount of air that goes in because it does actually affect it quite a bit. Uh, we'll get something better for an actual permanent use though. Anyway, we'll turn this off. And there you go. It's now two weeks later uh, and we think we've finished off the design. You can see we've got our burner, we've got it connected to the gas. We've drilled a hole in the side of the bucket. We've got our lid. The lid kind of fell apart, but we expected that to happen. We didn't build it very well. Um, and it looks like we're good to go. So we'll fire it up and see how well it performs. So look at that, working perfectly. Uh, now that we've turned it off, there are no loud noises. Uh, it works really well. We've got uh, a nice flame that comes out, kind of spirals its way up. So that's really good. Uh, we might uh, just find something to test it with. So to test it, finally, we've put together a little crucible there. Uh, we've got those little bolts on the side so we can lift it up with like a uh, little... Uh, I'll show you the piece. This little, this little piece. Uh, and we've got three aluminium cans in there and we just want to make sure that it'll get hot enough to melt aluminium because that'll be really nice. So we'll turn it on and we'll see how it goes. Alright, gas is on and here we go. to see in there. Oh yeah. Well there you go, that's uh, three aluminium cans worth of aluminium. Uh, melted that easy. So we'll move up to a different metal, maybe we'll test with some brass or some copper. And Looking at the furnace now, you can see that nothing has eroded away. So it's looking like our cement will hold up really well. The next thing we want to try melting is our brass. Uh, that's got a little bit higher of a melting point. It's like 940 compared to 700 degrees of aluminium. So we're just going to chuck all this in there. And we'll see if our furnace can melt that. Ten minutes of burning, uh, we can see it's red hot, but uh, the brass in there hasn't melted, you probably can't see, but I don't know, it should be getting close I reckon. It's about 15 minutes after we started and it's just started to soften, definitely getting somewhere. So you can see there's a little bit of uh, zinc fumes coming off, so we're standing way back. Uh, making sure not to breathe any of that in. Now I didn't film us pouring uh, the brass because we kind of needed both hands for the job. Uh, but there you go, that is our little ingot of brass. Uh, I'm going to compare that to the aluminium. There we go, it's a little piece of aluminium and our piece of brass. You probably see now that the furnace has started cracking just a little bit around the edges. Uh, we're not too concerned about that because we have had it on for a total of, I don't know, half an hour maybe, so it's done pretty well, I think. We'll see how it goes if we do it a couple more times, but it looks like it's holding up fairly well. So now we're just going to have a go at seeing if we can melt copper. We've got some copper in the crucible now, and hopefully, we don't expect it to, but it'd be really nice if we could melt some of that copper. So 
it seems like it has actually melted the copper. Uh, you can see in there it's, there's some shiny stuff at the bottom. So that's really good. We'll wait for the, the whole thing to melt and then we'll see if we can pour it out. There you go. After pouring it out, it looks a bit black, but that's all the copper that we managed to melt. So that's pretty good. It means that our furnace uh, can actually reach over 1100 degrees. So awesome. There we have it. We're able to melt aluminium, brass, and copper with the furnace. So I think that is a big success. See you later.